Many years ago, I experienced a big shift in the way that I was approaching pedal making. You see, I started off like many with well-established projects, building from layouts or from commercial PCBs, and just kind of sticking the components in and soldering them together very much like a paint by numbers type approach. And that worked well. I did a lot of pedals that way. However, I started getting to a point where I wanted to start making changes of my own and I wanted to start making things that were my own kind of uh, results of my imagination, if you will. And so what I decided I needed to do was to learn exactly what the circuit was actually doing instead of just putting all the components where someone else told me to put them. I also decided that I needed to start learning how to read a schematic. Um, I was in college at the time. However, I wasn't studying engineering. Both my degrees are in physics, which is very much into just, you know, the equations of everything. And when it came to electronics, we had a single electronics lab. We didn't get very deep into things. So there were a lot of things that I didn't know. Now, I'm not a circuit analysis whiz like many of the other people out there on the forums or internet groups. However, I've been through enough schematics and, and uh, circuits to know what the basic building blocks look like inside of most of the guitar effects. And so I thought it would be useful to put together a little video series where in each episode, I'll take a look at uh, one, maybe two schematics, and we'll just kind of go through and we'll look at the different blocks inside of the circuit. And we'll talk about what each one of them does. And we'll talk about ways that we can modify it a little bit to change the outcome of it. But we're not going to get into the equations. We're not going to get into the theory of what's going on with it. I'll leave that to those circuit analysis whiz type people. Um, but I'm just trying to help make the transition from kind of solder by numbers to really understanding what a schematic is doing a little bit easier. Today I'm looking at a basic transistor stage. Uh, when we have boost pedals, boost pedals are usually a single gain stage with maybe a little bit of filtering and they can be classified really as one of two types of boosts either a transistor-based or an op-amp-based boost. And today we're going to look at one of the real classics of transistor-based um, boost designs, and that is the LPB-1 from Electroharmonics. It's been around forever, and it's considered by many to be kind of a standard um, first build or early build to kind of help you get your feet under you. Okay, so here we have our LPV1 schematic. And in reality, this is really just a very standard, simple transistor gain stage. But we're going to go ahead and walk through it, starting at the input here. The very first component that we find is R1. R1 is our pull-down resistor. And his function is to create a high impedance path to ground which helps with alleviating any pops or clicks associated with turning the circuit on. Next, we have C1, and C1 is our input capacitor. And this input capacitor does a couple of different things. First, it blocks DC voltage from getting into the rest of our circuit. If we were to send large amounts of DC voltage into our circuit, we could potentially damage components, or we could just cause the circuit to not work correctly. Another thing that happens is that C1, in conjunction with R4 here, creates a high-pass filter. When you go through a capacitor and then through a resistor to ground, this point right here sees a high pass filter. And that cutoff frequency is for that filter is determined by these two values. In the case of this circuit, those values result in a 16 hertz, roughly, um, high pass cutoff frequency. And if we wanted to get more base response, we could make C1 larger. 
um, but that's not really necessary in this case. But if you are designing something for a bass, say maybe a five string bass that might even be down tuned, you might want to consider adjusting that. Up next is this section all right here. These four resistors and the transistor make up the gain stage. Um, this is called a voltage division bias transistor stage. All that means is that we are using R2 and R4 to form a voltage divider to provide a voltage offset here at the base and then R3 and R5 are um, also in play to help uh, set the gain of the stage. If we wanted to make the gain of the transistor stage higher, we could reduce the value of R5, which means that the transistor would sink more current through it, which would result in more amplification. But as it is now, this is already a pretty low value, resulting in a, in a sufficient amount of gain for this kind of circuit. Go ahead and get rid of these lines here. And then up next is C2. And C2 is our output capacitor. His job is very similar to C1 in that he's going to be blocking any DC voltage that um, may be in our circuit. For example, our 9 volt supply as it comes through R3 would come this direction and the capacitor helps block any of that voltage from going out of our output so that we don't damage anything that might be on the outboard side of the circuit. And C2 will also provide some filtering. We, if we look closely though, we see that C2 and the volume pot form another high pass filter because we're going through a capacitor and then we're going, we have this constant 100 kilo ohms to ground, which means that right here, this point sees a, uh, sees another high pass filter again with the same values at about 16 hertz. And then the output is just a divided version of this signal here. So it still sees all the filtering, we just have the ability to reduce it in amplitude because it's going through the voltage divider of our potentiometer there. And that's really all there is to the audio path of the circuit. Um, we'll also take a quick look at the power supply section up here. So here's our power supply section. This isn't exactly the way that the circuit or the schematic for the LPB1 is always drawn, um, but that's okay. This is considered a pretty basic uh, power input configuration. First, we have this diode right here. This is a shock key diode, which has a very low um, forward voltage drop when passing DC through it. And this functions as a reverse polarity protection diode because we are only allowing the signal, the, the DC voltage to go that direction. If we were to put a negative 9 volts here, the function of the diode would keep any, um, any voltage coming back this direction, which could potentially cause an incorrect application of voltage in the rest of our circuit and fry something. So um, this guy is here to uh, protect the circuit from incorrect voltages. And then we have C3. C3 is our filter capacitor. Because a capacitor blocks DC voltage, none of our DC is going to go to ground, but any of our um, AC signal that might be on our voltage line will. And so that prevents us from putting AC signal from the voltage line, which might be coming from a, a bad power source or a non-filtered power source, and getting amplified through our circuit. That means that we are reducing the noise that the circuit is going to put out. If this, if this capacitor was not here, then any kind of ripple on our DC voltage would get amplified and would go 
out the output in the form of noise. Um, additionally, it acts as kind of a small reservoir of charge so that if we were to have a momentary disruption in our 9 volt supply, um, it could potentially help kind of smooth any little dips that might come into play there. But with that, we've now worked our way through the entire circuit. Again, this is just a very basic transistor stage. Uh, the only way to really simplify it more is if we were to get rid of R2 and R4, then we would have kind of the most basic transistor gain stage you can have, which is um, a transistor with a resistor to power and a resistor to ground and taking our signal out of either the collector or the emitter. But I hope you found this useful. And um, if you liked it, go ahead and subscribe so that you can get notified when the next one comes. And we'll see you then. Thanks.